Hey guys, welcome back to the Capital Mindset Show. This is going to be an addendum video to a video re previous re released, and that is uh, RKT Holdings, okay, or Rocket Companies. Uh, so basically, again, the goal of this channel is to provide you guys with accurate information or as accurate as possible. And when mistakes are made or things aren't explained well, uh, I will always do correction videos. And no, the videos will never be deleted. The videos will always be up there. Uh, and what I'm going to do is this video is going to be posted as a link to on that video, just in case people come across that video first, there's always going to be the availability of corrections. So then they are directed to the more accurate information or the more up to date information, uh, so to speak. So, uh, I went a little bit deeper into rocket and actually came out with a little bit more questions than answers. Um, so the correction is quite simple. It's simply that the, uh, S one filings, all the documents verbatim say that, Class D common stock is exchangeable for Class A in conjunction with the uh, units. So yes, that that is that is a thing. Now, what has not changed is the dilution effect when Class D is converted to Class A. It actually does, of course, increase the supply of Class A, and that is a problem that we have to think about. Right now, Dan Gilbert, Art Rock Holdings, is going through a lawsuit um, for securities fraud, and that has to do with them selling the 20.2 million shares at the time that they did because the, and the, the allegation is that they did so with the intent of pumping the stock beforehand before selling. Uh, whether or not something will come out of that, we will have to see. I think it's a low likelihood of anything coming out of that. So you can more or less dismiss that, but that's just something out there. I hope you, know, you guys don't think I was omitting it, right? So I'm gonna say that here. Um, and uh, there were also some things that uh, when I spoke with Austin, you guys remember Austin, he helped me out on this, or he found this information. So I want to give him credit. And it was about the uh, Julie Booth CFO, the she's, she has a lot of roles in this company that are kind of questionable. Okay. And uh, I'll explain why they're questionable right now. So let's actually go visit her profile and uh, see what she's all about. So if we take a look here, uh, she leads the accounting, finance, and internal audit teams. Right there, if you took an auditing class in college and you remember, or you're a CPA and you remember your auditing lessons when you studied for the CPA exam, or you're a CIA and you remember all the ethics codes and violations that you know are attributable to auditing, uh, then you would know or remember that the CFO should have nothing to do with the internal audit teams. Okay, they should not be leading them. Uh, the internal audit team should be fairly independent. Should not be reporting to the CFO. Uh, the CFO can have obviously has roles within the direction of the company financially, but the auditing internal auditing should not have anything to do with it. Is it illegal? No. Is it concerning? Yes. Okay. She is not the head of the audit committee. I want to be very clear. The audit committee head is actually this guy who actually was appointed to the audit committee. Okay. So she is effectively reporting to him, but the internal audit teams, she is leading them. You don't want any connection typically with the internal audit team and the CFO. But in this case, there is. Does that equal fraud? No. Does that mean that there is a higher statistical probability of fraud? Yes. That, that statistically, that is why we, we say that in the code of ethics for auditing, that, that shouldn't be, uh, there shouldn't be that connection because statistically, there's a higher propensity of fraud when that occurs because of the uh, motives, intentions, or, you know, and a lot of people remember, they don't wake up and say, oh, I'm going to commit fraud today. It's kind of like, a slow, slippery slope, okay? <laughs> um, and so I'll kind of explain or not showcase, kind of showcase this conversation that happened with a, a Deloitte auditor. Uh, so for me, the characteristics of credibility and trust, the CFO, the external auditor, and the head of internal audit are the three windows, the audit committee chair, okay, boom. So what is this? The CFO and the head of internal audit, that's both her job, okay? So she is two of those people that this, this auditor is assuming to be three different people, okay? Uh, so... Basically, the external auditor is the only one that's uh, not done. And I think uh, Ernst & Young is, is their uh, external auditor. So then they have Ernst & Young and then basically her uh, is reporting to the um, uh, internal audit committee. Okay, so that's, that's something that we need to uh, think about or consider. All right, so then uh, one of the confusions actually came from this document. This is actually on the SEC. This is from Rocket Holdings or Rocket Companies. And this is actually what's, what, caused, what was causing the confusion because you know, if you take this uh, more literally, the, you can actually see the discrepancy between the economic interest and the voting power. Okay, So then there, there is a discrepancy in terms of the ratios between economic interest and voting power, insinuating that 
the uh, quantity of shares relative to the economic interest are as such. Now, what actually causes that is that there is actually a formula that dictates uh, what the voting power will be, and it actually lowers the voting power if the, again, the voting power of Class D common stock is above 79% and then kicks in as soon as the voting power is below uh, 79% and it brings it up, okay? Because it gives the, the shares 10 votes per, per share. And then Class A only has one vote per share, okay? So that's causing the discrepancy there and that caused the confusion there. So now we have that corrected. And then again, there's a discrepancy that was caused here. So in their, in their statements, uh, their previous filed statement, they have the ownership percentage up there with 6.92%, September 30th, 2021. And then down here, they had the uh, net income percentage attributable to non-controlling interest and controlling interest for September 30th, 2021. The percentages were 6.92% and the percentage down here was 5.26%. So that discrepancy is 1.66% that is just randomly missing. Okay, so then the explanation here is that 6.92% uh, it, I, it was on a rolling basis. So then therefore the 5.26% should be lower than 6.92%, but going forward, it should be 6.92%. So that's what was causing discrepancy there. And then that's, that's kind of answered. Okay. So that's discovered. All right. So uh, now the concerns. Okay. So I hopefully now have kind of answered or corrected all the corrections from the last video. Um, and this was actually really fun to actually investigate further because these VIEs, man, I'm telling you. Uh, so the uh, concerns I have, again, is kind of highlighting or sticking to the um, uh, buybacks, right? So there, there's another company called UWMC, UWMC, or this is the macroeconomic backdrop, but I'll address them in tandem with the buybacks. UWMC is kind of a competitor or quasi competitor to Rocket Holdings. Uh, the CEO of this company was on Meet Kevin's show. Uh, so when I looked up this guy CEO, actually me, Kevin's video came up and that's how I found that out. And he interviewed him and actually he talks a little bit bad about rocket companies. That's not to say that rock companies is bad just because this guy says so, uh, but they have clearly a rivalry. And uh, so then I consider them to be rivals and competitors. Uh, so they are down about 51% while RKT, I think is down about 42%, 41%. So uh, let's take a look at the one year. Yeah, they're about they're down about forty point five four percent. So, uh, what what is dissimilar? What's what I th I think I know that Meet Kevin was invested in this company. I'm not sure if he was invested in the other one, even though he had the CEO. You guys can comment down below if he was. I I don't know that, so I'm not going to say that. But I, I know he was invested in, in Rocket Companies, and I remember he was uh, very bullish on Rocket Companies. But Rocket Companies performed very very terribly, and I, I'm going to say this. So the market is going to perhaps always discount Rocket Companies because of the VIE structure, because of the complicatedness, because of the uh, questions that will arise. Um, so for example, if you kind of consider uh, my position, so my position, I'm not going to ever be investing in RKT uh, holdings. So that's my capital that's never gonna enter this company. And then I, by extension, will never recommend this to, to the company I work for. We're probably never ever gonna drop a, a penny into this company. Uh, so yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Unless we got like a private deal, which, you know, there's always rumors that Buffett, there were rumors back then that Buffett was going to get involved in this company on a private deal, not the same deal that Class A Comstock would have, but on a more direct basis. And I doubt Buffett would ever allow himself to be tied up in the VIE like that. So again, and again, this is the other question. They, they did a $1 billion buyback or they announced a $1 billion buyback. And it's supposed to be, I think, uh, executed over two years. So the market cap at the time of Class A common stock was about $2 billion. So that's about half of the market cap. Uh, something doesn't add up there because if they were buying back shares, what's going on, right? Um, in, in fact, there have been more and more issuances of Class A common stock. So more stock is actually entering the market. And if the market doesn't have the appetite for this, you are going to see, be seeing consistent share declines, right, in price decline in price, decline in price. And then that doesn't include the fact that if someone is gifted or given a class D common stock or class C common stock, because I see that they did actually leave room for openings for, you know, private deals or off balance sheet transactions. They actually mentioned that over and over and over again, off balance sheet transactions and off balance sheet transactions usually is a trigger word for, for auditors. If you're an auditor out there, you're probably like, ah, off balance sheet transactions, because that's actually what Enron was doing. I'm not saying that rocket company is doing what Enron was doing, but it, it is like kind of like a flag. It's like, well, what are you doing? Um, off balance sheet transactions. What, what are you doing? So they, they leave a lot of room for, for these, uh, um, activities uh, on all their filings, right? They mention it quite a bit. Uh, so 
you know, it's not not to say that they're doing anything nefarious, um, you know, but it, it's something that would bring up more questions than answers. You know, it's it's kind of like, oh, I'm not comfortable with that. So it, it further solidifies my 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 feelings on this company that it's just way out of my comfort zone. And then that's basically the conclusion of this video. For me, this is way, way, way out of my comfort zone. Uh, if it's in your comfort zone, you know, have at it. Uh, and then do proper analysis. And then I hope you got, you guys do very well. Um, but you know, there's plenty of investments in the world. Uh, this one just definitely out of my comfort zone and that's okay. Uh, you don't have to swing at every ball that comes at you. Okay. So I hope that I explained myself well, and I corrected the record. Um, the, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think I covered everything but if i didn't cover everything please comment down below i did receive some comments on the last video uh and i want to actually highlight this always 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 if you think i've made a mistake comment down below and your, you know your comment will never ever be deleted oh this was another thing uh the so there was an issue with commenters commenting and their comment automatically getting deleted i apologize for that that's google's filter just don't post links just mention the file that you want me to look at, but don't post the, the links because Google automatically blocks those. It's to prevent spam and other things like that. So uh, that's what that's what's going on. It wasn't me deleting your comments, um, but you know, just don't post uh, any sort of links because then Google will automatically delete your comment. Um, and on that note, again, if you if I ever make a mistake going forward in the future or leave something out or don't clarify something, comment down below. And I will do my best always to correct the record straight. And of course, never delete a video. Just, you know, set the record straight with a new video. All right, guys. On that note, I hope you guys have a great one. And I will see you guys on the next video. Bye.